Marvel Nemesis Rise of the Imperfects on GameCube is a game that I grew up with and loved. In fact, growing up, I actually kind of liked this game more than Ultimate Alliance. What? What the f- I know, I know. Don't kill me. It's been a while since I've played this game and it came out way back in 2005, so I had to pick it up and replay it 18 years later. Maybe I've gotten too used to the Disney version of the Marvel Universe. Because after picking up this game and replaying it as an adult, I gotta say, it was certainly more dark and violent than I remembered. And definitely more serious than the more lighthearted MCU stuff that we're used to seeing these days. And honestly, that's pretty refreshing. The lighting, atmosphere, and tone in the game are all really dark and it does a good job of conveying a sense of hopelessness in the story mode. The violence and the sense of dread starts almost immediately in the story mode, which is about an alien invasion. These aliens attack New York City and murder the Hulk, Punisher, and Captain America. And somehow it doesn't matter what character we use, two hits is enough to kill the aliens that kill the freaking Hulk. Why? The aliens work for this shiny Mr. Clean. His name is Niles Van Rockel, assuming I'm not butchering his name. He's our main villain and he's sending out these aliens to attack New York. He's also got his own league of supervillains known as the Imperfects. His main goal is to make clones of this lady named Paragon that he kidnapped and genetically modified to be a killing machine. And the clones are to be used to save his home world from an invading menace. That's right, he invades a planet to stop his planet from getting invaded. Instead of asking the heroes for their help, he decides to attack both New York and them with the Imperfects and Aliens. Now that the nonsensical plot is out of the way, let's get into the story mode itself. While the overall combat is entertaining to play with, with this beat-em-up style along with the occasional one-on-one -on -one boss fight, most of the missions consist of simply clearing out waves of enemies. There is some variation here and there with certain missions asking you to protect civilians, to destroy certain items, and some others sprinkled in here and there. Normally, this would get very repetitive, but I was able to beat the story mode in about three and a half hours. While such a short story mode normally isn't a good thing, I think it's for the best here because otherwise a lot of the missions would be very repetitive. The length of the story mode can easily be extended since you get to choose what hero you get to play as and a couple of different scenarios. However, it's like those extra options are only there to fill in time as if you get three options, two of them are just described as clear this wave of aliens and the obvious option that moves the story forward has a detailed description. The very best part of the story mode in my opinion and the part that guarantees you'll never get bored is the part where you'll fight against your brainwashed allies who are under control of Niles Van Rockel and when you get to play as the Imperfects to take down the heroes. During a lot of these matches, your opponent will have some sort of boost. Sometimes they can recharge their health, or you will be poisoned, or they will have some special attack for just that fight. For a first time player, these fights are definitely interesting and have a variety to them. And I found myself looking forward to them just to be able to see who fights who and unlocking all the characters along the way. While these fights carry the story mode in my opinion, a problem that I came across a couple of times in these fights that would absolutely ruin the fun for me when I was fighting the computer, they would literally just break. They would just jump off the edge and kill themselves. It was the most unsatisfying thing to work through waves of enemies and finally get to another superpowered being just for them to decide that life has no purpose and just to jump off the bridge. Overall, the story mode has an interesting concept, but it feels like they failed to achieve their goal of telling a decent story. A lot of the Imperfect's backstories are quite frankly not as good as I would think and not that interesting. Not to mention the story itself has a lot of plot holes that left me thinking, wait, what the hell? At times it felt like EA was trying to push their own characters at the expense of some of our Marvel favorites. I don't know why they only chose a handful of characters to use in this game, and like half of them are imperfects, and like that we don't care about and we'll never see again. But this game would have really benefited from as many characters as possible. Well, I guess they wrote themselves into a hole by killing some of Marvel's most famous characters. But still, where's Deadpool, Black Panther, Mr. Fantastic, Cyclops, Thor, and the others? Ultimate Alliance had them. Since we also have playable Marvel villains like Venom and I guess technically Magneto would be considered a villain, that opens up the pool of characters up even more. Doctor Doom, Loki, Red Skull, Carnage, and so many more could have been in the game. I should probably mention here that depending on the version of the game, you could also play as Captain America and Doctor Doom. Please let me know in the comments if their inclusion somehow alters the story mode. That's like a, an insane alteration. But back to my point. With all of these amazing and well-loved superpower beings, why the hell would you have such a small list of people and have characters that play similarly or basically the same, like Human Torch and Solara? 
or three different web slingers in Spider-Man, Venom, and Hazmat. It just feels like this game could have been so much more and they chose to be lazy or weren't given the rights to all the characters, which definitely hinders the gameplay. The versus mode of the game though is where the game really shines. The best part of the story mode was when two superpower beings would square up and that basically sums up the entire versus mode of the game. Regardless of the mid story plot, the combat itself is super satisfying. And I mean it should be, it's the main focus of the game, right? Each character feels super fun to use and a lot of them feel completely different from each other. The Thing is a super strong fist fighter who's strong enough to pick up trucks, while Spider-Man can web swing and he's not strong enough to pick up trucks, but he can pick up and throw cars. Then we have Storm who can literally shoot lightning and fly around, but her physical abilities aren't as strong, and so on and so forth. This was handled really well and all of these fighters feel like they have the abilities that are unique to them. I think they should have been expanded on this instead of including fighters that have similar abilities and having such a small roster. Regardless of similarities, every fighter has their own unique and quite frankly violent finishers that make you want to use them and try them all out. My life! My life! It did feel like a little bit of balancing was needed to make each character properly playable since characters like Iron Man and Paragon were so OP most of the time that the, someone like the Wink or Electra didn't even stand a chance. Well, I guess that adds more of a realistic power scaling to things, but again, that would work better with more characters with a wider skill sets and abilities to provide a bit more balance. For example, people for the most part don't mind that Smash Bros has a tier list with players and characters that are clearly better than others because there's such a large pool of characters to go around and use, and that provides options. Most fighting games have this option, but I especially loved how each character would talk shit to each other before and after a match. Especially because you'd expect a lot of the heroes to be friendly with each other. Tell me how my ass tastes. That being said, despite the problems, I honestly think I like the combat more in Marvel Nemesis than I did in Ultimate Alliance. Don't get me wrong here, Ultimate Alliance was a great game and it did pretty much everything better than Marvel Nemesis. But I think most people will disagree with me here, but I think I like the combat more in Marvel Nemesis because of the focus on the one-on-one -on -one style of combat as well as the camera angle. Ultimate Alliance felt a lot like we were running through a little corridors as it was more of a dungeon crawler. And while Marvel Nemesis you only had one location most of the time, the camera angle made it seem a lot more open to me. I can understand why Ultimate Alliance's camera was that way since we could use four characters at a time and of course, if you are a Marvel fan, you will most likely enjoy it. But there was just something that stuck out about the way Marvel Nemesis combat presented itself. Even all these years, I can pick it up and still have fun. And just saying, Ultimate Alliance is also a masterpiece. I'm just saying I can pick this game up and have fun for different reasons. Marvel Nemesis Rise of the Imperfects is not a perfect game, but oh boy is it fun to play. While it definitely feels like there was so much potential that was missed out on, there is so much this game offers. A more in-depth, fledged out story mode with a variety of missions, more characters, and perhaps a slightly better balancing could do wonders for this game. However, the main focus of the game is one-on-one -on -one combat between characters and it excels in that. Despite some obvious flaws in hindsight, this game was really fun to pick up and play. I'd love to see a modern remake of this game or even a Marvel Nemesis 2 with the improvements I've discussed. I'm glad to have been able to pick up that and play this game. Such a dope throwback and it really made me feel like the old days, sitting in front of the TV, eating some chips and just playing this. So what do you guys think? Do you love the game? Do you hate it? Was there an aspect of the game I didn't cover that you loved or hated? Please let me know in the comments below. And if you made it this far, thank you for listening to an idiot rant. Please consider subscribing to support the channel. We're almost at a thousand subscribers, so I would really appreciate it. Also, if you have time, I usually livestream on weekdays around 8.30pm Pacific Time and on weekends whenever I wake up and pull myself together. The schedule can sometimes change based on if I'm working on a video like this one, as it does take some time to put together. Also, consider these videos if you like my work, and thank you for your time. Plot Armor Games, out.